Hi, I'm Pippa Taser and I'm going to chat a little bit about fundraising for an Operation Wallacea expedition. Often the main restricting factor between joining an op-ball trip is the expense of an op-ball trip and something that we invest a lot of time and effort and energy into at op -Wall is being able to provide as comprehensive fundraising information as possible. Often it's really easy to think that you just have to pay for the trip yourself from um, from your own funds, from um, from borrowing or your student loan. Whereas actually there are lots of places that recognise the key skills you gain from joining an expedition and that also expeditions like ours are, are cost prohibitive for many and so often you will overlook an opportunity that this can give you and and seek alternatives whereas there are a lot of places that we can introduce you to and show you um, help support and guide in applications to make your fundraising as successful as possible. I think also another preconception is that fundraising will just take over your life and you'll have no time for anything else. What we've tried to do in our fundraising support and guide is be able to show you ways you're able to pick up and put down fundraising whenever you have time. So a lot of the ways that I work with our participants is developing a plan to make fundraising something that you can fit into little windows of time that you're able to um, to make that time as effective as possible. So hopefully you'll stick with me and we'll talk about which are the kind of the main ways and we'll be able to convince you that fundraising is entirely possible and that you will be able to use that as a key skill moving forward. The four main ways that we look at raising funds for an Operation Wallacea trip. What I'm wanting to shine a light on today is the grants and sponsorship. And it gives you more information about who is likely to give you money for joining um, yeah, an expedition of a lifetime and, and why. There are other ways that we talk about in our full fundraising meetings. We talk about fundraising activities, how we go about organising those, easy fundraising, and as well as if you're looking to have um, employment top up your funds as well so there are ways that you can tackle the entire fundraising amount and we would go into a lot more detail but i think what is often overlooked for many is grants and sponsorship and also just the scale of grants and sponsorship how many there are um so yeah let's let's go into that grant funding um it's something that before i had started fundraising hadn't really um, heard of or considered and didn't really know that much about whereas actually what is really easy to talk yourself out of is why why would someone pay me to do this why why would that happen and I think it's really important to remember that actually there are lots of funds that are available that you can apply for for a whole host of reasons it's not just a one size fits all and it's not just a simple um you're doing this so you're entitled to this um there's there's a whole a whole spectrum of them so let me just talk a little bit about them um universities if you are at university currently there will be funds available to you within that institution what we try and do is be able to introduce you to the different places that you can go. Um, there's multiple spots, so we also have university specific guides as well as um, we'll help you through different places to go. How you ask, it seems so crazy that how you ask for something can change the outcome and success of it, but actually it really does. So that's something that we're able to, to coach you on a little bit. But even within universities, you have your main library may have access to funding, student services, um, as well as departmental funds and other areas too. 
charities and trust funds. If you don't know much about charities and trust funds, there are there's just thousands of them. And what we do is we work with a publisher who publishes details of all of the registered charities and we go through every registered charity, every grant they have available and we put that into a database. And what every charity has is a criteria for obtaining funds um, from, from that specific um, pot of funds. Um, that might be based on where you live. It might be based on um, what you are studying. Um, it might be based on the country that you're traveling um, to. And it might be your own personal circumstances. So if um, a member of your family was in like the armed forces, for example, you could apply for funding. That that does happen quite a lot in, in, in various grants, but there's a whole wide spectrum as to why. Um, but they are, you'll recognise when we send you the list through, you'll recognise a lot of the names, quite a lot of companies get huge tax benefits from giving their money to registered charities. So you'll see a lot of petroleum companies they just have their own trust funds, their own charities, so they're able to, to manage that rather than make donations. So they will then put a, a chunk of their their profits um, and they'll put them into those charities and trust funds and then they manage those separately. So a registered charity works almost like a company um, and they have to publish details of all the money they have coming in and all the money they have going out. So that's something we work very hard on making sure that you know how to access that money and why they're likely to give it to you. Something slightly smaller is a bursary fund. And this is where you still have money coming in and you still have donations being made, but it is not on the scale of that of a registered charity. It's slightly harder to get details on a national level for us, but it's very easy to be able to guide you into where to look for those for those funds. There's also charitable organisations. So they are generally set up of people that give their time and raise money for a whole host of different reasons. What charitable organisations look for is what impact this has on you? What change will this make to you? Um, how will this grow? And for Operation Wallacea, it changes so much of, of your opportunities, of your exposure, your experience, and where that is a platform for you to go on um, and, and develop this if this is where you're wanting to look into a career, if you're wanting to join Opwall for the first time because you don't know if research is for you, you don't know if education is for you, you don't know if conservation work overseas, field environments. It's that perfect opportunity to immerse yourself in all those aspects and come out the other side just really able to process what 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 your key outstanding features were. So it's charitable organisations is a huge area to be able to recognise the importance of growth that comes from from these sorts of expeditions. Schools, probably in a similar vein to charitable organisations, they're looking at your development still even after you've left school. Um, and it's something that I didn't really believe that a school would want to hear back from me after I'd left um, and tell them all about this crazy expedition that you can join. Um, but they they do. It's fantastic for the current students to hear and see you um, and for you to be able to share what, what this trip is you're about to embark on. Um, and hopefully you'll really enjoy it. I think um, there's nothing more terrifying than talking to your old school. Um, but actually, once you do it, then you're like, ah, oh, this is really cool. Um, so I hope I hope that I'll be able to attempt you to do that for sure. Councils are slightly different and what they'll have is a whole different host of grants that could be available to you. And again, we'll be able to guide you and coach you on what you're looking for, how to ask. Often councils will have details of those smaller bursary funds too. So again, we'll be able to hopefully help help connect you to there. Companies also have funds. As I said a little bit about the charities, if they are giving huge amounts of money, they'll often just cut out the middle person and have their own registered charity. But often when they are companies, if they haven't done that, it's something that they're very open to engaging with. We do have some ways to make contacting companies as successful as possible. So we'll be able to talk to you about about that and, and how you do it. But for the companies, it's um, it's, it's a great area for for you to kind of uh, think about and, and how we'll how we'll be able to get you to to apply for those. 
And then our role, so fundraising, help and support, where where do we match you with everything we've told you and then everything we've, we've just mentioned before. So with the full fundraising meeting, we are really confident that we'll be able to give you enough information to make your fundraising as successful as possible. We do a refundable deposit as long as you cancel 185 days before you go. There's only a £50 cancellation charge you pay or if that date has passed, then it's within 30 days of booking. So you still get a really good chance to start fundraising and, and make that happen for you. The full fundraising meeting, we go into extensive detail about those areas I just talked about with grants and sponsorship, but also those other areas as well, the, the fundraising activities and so on. We'll also have an online resource library. So when I say about the grant database, um, we also have um, a ton of other information in there past um, success stories, um, examples, um, ideas. It's, it's just it's a crazy amount that's on there. It also has a link to the funding database as well. So you're able to have a look through there and see in different areas where you could apply for. If you happen to live across two areas, um, you should be able to apply for funding in both, so again, to maximise your chances. Um, and we'll just do everything that we can to, to be able to, to support and guide you through there. The templates and application support too is something that we put a lot of energy and effort into. So it just means that we try and cut down the amount of work you have to do to start your fundraising and make that successful. So everything that we'll aim for is, is within that. So just really, as I said at the very start, for you to be able to pick up and drop your fundraising whenever you have a window of time. So if that's half an hour, if that's 45 minutes, that we'll be able to make sure you are set up for success and you are able to to make that fundraising happen we're available at the office so please feel free to contact us send your applications questions anything we can do to help the email is fundraising at oddball.com and the phone number is a uk number 01790763194 and even if you just want to give us a call or email us to have a chat about fundraising and what your individual circumstances are then please do feel free to we love um i love hearing from you and talking about fundraising particularly but most of us have spent a lot of time on expeditions so we can chat about trips and also um about the fundraising too but hopefully we'll see you in the field and um, you can share your success stories with all of us and we'd love to hear it. Thank you so much and take care.